Barakat Yahawa, Barakat Yahawa Shai, Kahal Yom La Yahawa, Bahasham Yahawa Shai, Barachah Kodash, which means all praises to Yahawa is the name of the Heavenly Father. Bahasham means in the name. Yahweh Shai is the name of His only begotten Son, who the world only called Jesus Christ. Barachah Kodash means in the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, the only way you can worship the Father and the Son. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, salutations to all you brothers preaching the gospel and truth and in sincerity, always in charity. Um, this is going to be a response lesson to the elder uh, Manat Zagba out in uh, South Carolina. A lesson he did entitled, The Honey is Unclean Lie. You know, within this lesson, you know, uh, he got a message from a sister, which was asking him a question about whether honey was unclean or not. And she heard it from this group or, or you know, you should watch the video. It's a good video. You know, the elder went in and, 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 and thoroughly explained, you know, um, or showed through the scriptures that that, that honey is, in fact, uh, clean and, and that we can eat it. You know, uh, he brought out Romans 15 and 4, the things that are written of time are written for our learning that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. And he went and showed uh, numerous examples of our forefathers eating honey, you know, and um, without further ado, let's start with this. You know, because... Um, Window shopping, <laughs> like Apostle Hall calls it, or, or or camp hopping, or blending, you know, is 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 going to get a lot of people uh, confused, and and it's going to uh, lead them to their destruction, man. And that's why let's start with this. This is uh, the book of Second Peter one and nineteen. It says, "We have also a more sure word of prophecy." We Paul, uh, Paul, Peter is speaking about what the apostles, man. He's speaking about the doctrine that they received from Yahweh Shai himself. Right. And the same doctrine uh, 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 that the apostles of Great Millstone is teaching is the same doctrine that they had over 2000 years ago. This is the way walk ye in it, according to Isaiah, the 30th chapter, man. You see, because the scripture says this, let's get this real quick. This is the book of Acts, chapter two. And forty two, it says, and they let's start up, it says, then they that gladly received his word, who were Going up, uh, it says, verse 38, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Yahweh Shai, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promises unto you, Israelites, and to your children, and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our power shall call. Personal pronoun, our power. And to all the Israelites that are afar off. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, save yourselves from this untoward generation, man. So don't walk like these rebellious people. Like it says in Ezekiel, the second chapter, it says, be not rebellious like this rebellious house, man. So we ought to be what? Obedient, right? Verse 41. Then they that gladly received his word, that's what Yahweh Shah prayed. Yahweh Shah in John, the 17th chapter says, I pray not for them only. He didn't just pray for his disciples, but he prayed for all the people who would believe on the word of his disciples. It's the same thing in this time today. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized in the same day. There were added unto them about 3000 souls and they, the ones that received the word, continue steadfastly in the apostles doctrine in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. That's why the scripture says this is the book of. Um, Second Timothy three. In verse 14, matter of fact, thir 13, it says, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. So you don't want to be caught up into that, man. That's why the scripture says precept upon precept. You know, that's why the scripture says, if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of the heavenly father, man. Everything that's stated should be backed up with the scripture. It should be proven through the scriptures. The scripture says, prove all things and hold fast to that which is good. Right. Verse 14, but continue thou in the things which thou has learned, right? The apostles doctrine and has been assured of. Why are you assured? Because you went back and proven the things that were saying from these men who were teaching. Knowing of whom thou has learnt them, knowing of whom thou has learnt them. That's why we are here at Great Millstone. Our apostles has taught us to be as the Church of Berea. This is um um. Salaki, bear with me. Yep, yep, verse 11. It's um, verse 10. 
This is Acts 17 and 10. It says, And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. So you have to prove all things, man. You see? So you have to do your due diligence, man, as it is written. Study to show thyself approval. Workmen that needed not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Directly and correctly. So let's go back to uh, Second Peter. It's Second Peter 1 and 19. It says, We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. That's Yahweh Shah, man. And see, Yahweh Shah is formed within us, right? Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. So then no guy can say, oh, oh, this is the breakdown of this. And then another camp say, no, that's the breakdown of that. No, there is only one breakdown. According to Ephesians, the fourth chapter, there's one father, one Lord, one faith, one way. Right. It says, for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of men, but holy men of the heavenly father spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. So there's only one group out there that's, that's, that's preaching with 100% truth, man. And the scriptures warn you against, you know, having a, 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 a matter of fact, I'm just get it. It's Sirach 6 and 6. It says, be in peace with many, right? As the scripture says, right? If all possible, be at peace with all men, right? Nevertheless, have but one counselor of a thousand, man. So your counselor could be, is a, um, a symbolic of what? The camp. So have one camp out of a thousand, have one camp that you listen to, that you follow. Out of all these camps out here, man, you do well to take heed because the men of Great Millstone is, is, is telling you what it is, man. We have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of the Heavenly Father. So from there, let's get into the lesson. This is the book of, uh, let's start in Exodus. This is the book of Exodus 16, because if honey was unclean, then the Lord wouldn't use this as an analogy. This is, uh. Exodus 16 and 28. It says, And the Lord said unto Moses, How long refuse ye to keep my commandments and my laws? See, for that the Lord hath given you the Sabbath, therefore he giveth you on the sixth day the bread of two days. Abide ye every man in his place, let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. So the people rested on the seventh day, right? Because uh, the Lord rained manna out of the sky every day, but on the Sabbath, he didn't. So that's why uh, on the sixth day, he gave a double portion because the seventh day was the Sabbath, right? Verse 31, and the house of Israel called the name thereof manna, which that word manna in the Hebrew was man, right? Which means what is it or wetness, right? It says they called the name thereof manna and it was like coriander seed, white. And the taste of it was like wafers made with honey. So the manna that the Lord gave us tasted like wafers made with honey. If honey was unlawful, why would the, why would the manna taste like that? You see? And also, let's type this in. Why, why would the Lord uh, uh, say this about our land? Eight verses, right? From Ezekiel, Jeremiah, all the way to Exodus. And I'm going to just read one. Exodus 3 and 8, it says, I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land unto a good land and unto a lodge, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Unto a land flowing with milk and honey. Why would the Lord say that? If honey was unlawful, why would he bring us to a land flowing with milk and honey? Right? Now, when you go to the, uh, the commentary, just a couple little commentaries. It says, this expression here is used for the first time was already, it is probable, a proverbial one denoting generally richness and fertility. Right? And that's exactly what it means. The land flowing with milk and honey was symbolic of what the richness was a symbolic of the abundance of. Of, a, of, of, of fruit and the things that that, that that was needed in that land Flowing with milk and honey I.e. abounding with the choicest fruits Both for necessity and for delight The excellency and singular fruitfulness of this land You see 
And that's just a couple commentaries, you know? So the Lord used that analogy. He said of a land flowing with milk and honey to show what the fruitfulness of that land, the goodness of that land. Because what produces milk? Cattle. In order for you to have an abundance of cattle, you needed abundance of land, right? And what produces honey? Bees. What does bees do? They pollinate. You see? So that shows the, the, the abundance and the fruitfulness of that land that we was receiving. You understand? Because we can go into the a simple Google search, right? Health benefits of raw honey. And you could just go go click a couple, you know, and just go into it. it says raw honey benefits, gut health. Honey is a prebiotic. Immune health supports overall health. Energy, quick source of energy. Antioxidants fights free radicals. It says what's in raw honey? Bee pollen provides vitamins, minerals, protein, uh, phytonutrients, and more. Propo uh, propolis packed with uh, phenolic compounds plus vitamins, minerals, and enzymes. Antioxidants, rich in antioxidant compounds that fight free radicals. Minerals include some calcium, iron, magnesium, uh, phosphorus, potassium, and zinc. Vitamins, contains vitamin B6, uh, ni niacin, thiamine, riboflavin, and pantothenic acid. Amino acids. Raw honey has trace amounts of approximately 22 amino acids, man. So this is all good for what? For, for, for your overall health. Throat comfort, sleep support, moisturizing face mask. <laughs> you can even uh, use it as a topical, man. Right? Because on, on this one, uh, one of them I, I looked at, it says it's good for health, uh, for cuts. You can have a bad cut. You could put honey on it and honey, um, um, disinfects it. And honey, uh, um, 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 uh, quickens the healing process, man. You see on this one, it says quick energy boost controls, blood sugar, weight management, boost your metabolism, nourishes your skin. It says for your beauty routine, it can nourish your skin, help heal wounds. Reduce infection and can even keep acne at bay. See, this is all, all benefits of honey. You know, let's read this. A good source of antioxidants, which we read. Raw honey contains an array of plant chemicals that act as antioc uh, antioxidants, antibacterial, antifungal properties, heal wounds, phytonutrient powerhouse, help for digestive issues, soothe a sore throat. You see? All these things, honey does that, man. You know, which is why uh, the Lord compares. Matter of fact, let's get um, let's get uh, Deuteronomy. Matter of fact, let's get Deuteronomy eight first. This is Deuteronomy eight and six. It says, "Therefore thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy power to walk in His ways and to fear Him." For the Lord thy power bringeth thee into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and depths that spring out of valleys and hills. So it's a well-watered land, <laughs> meaning it's a fruitful land, man. A land of wheat and of barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of oil, olive and honey, a land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness. Thou shalt not lack anything in it, a land whose stones are iron and out of whose heels thou mayest dig brass. When thou hast eaten and art full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy power for the good land which he giveth thee. Right? And that's why that's, and, and to what you, how about Sham Yahusha for having me get that one first? Because this is going to tie into this one. Now this is Deuteronomy 32 and 8. When the Most High divided to their nation, Salaki, when the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, meaning what? Their lands, right? He separated the sons of Adam when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. He gave us the choices of uh, uh, land. He gave us the choices part of the earth, right? It says, for the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. He found him in a desert land and in the waste howling wilderness. He led him about. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. As an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings. So the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange power with him. 
He made him ride on the high places of the earth that he might eat the increase of the fields. He made him to suck honey out of the rock and oil out of the flinty rock. Didn't we read that in, in, in the eighth chapter? Butter of kine and milk of sheep with fat of lambs and rams of the breed of Bashan and goats with the fat of kidneys of wheat. And thou didst drink the pure blood of the great. So the Lord gave us the best choice things, man. You see? But Jeshurun waxed fat and kicked. Thou art waxing fat, thou art grown thick, thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook the Most High which made him and, and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. So when the Lord gave us all those things, us as a nation, what, 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 denied the Lord. You see? That's why King Solomon prayed and said, give me not riches, lest I uh, 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 deny thee. Roughly paraphrasing the scripture, you know? So from there, let's get into, uh, let's get 1 Samuel, the 14th chapter. And uh, let's start at the 23rd verse. This is an example of uh, one of our forefathers, you know, eating honey. Now, this is 1 Samuel 14. Let's start at 23. It says, Yahweh Basham Yahushai saved Israel that day, and the battle passed over unto Beth Haven. And the men of Israel were distressed that day. For Saul had adjured the people, saying, Cursed be the man that eateth any food until evening, that I may, that I may be avenged on my enemies. So none of the people tasted any food. And so they were fasting, right? And all they of the land came to a wood, and there was honey upon the ground. And when the people were coming to the wood, behold, the honey dropped. But no man put his hand to his mouth, for the people feared the oath. But Jonathan, which is Saul's son, heard not his heard not when his father charged the people with the oath. So Jonathan didn't know nothing about this oath, right? Wherefore he put forth the end of the rod that was in his hand, and dipped it in a honeycomb, and put his hand to his mouth. And his eyes were enlightened. You see? And what is that going into? That goes into, he he he, he got uh, uh, nutrients from that, man. Like in, uh, we read uh, uh, on the Google, it says one of the uh, properties of uh, honey was what? A, a quick, quick energy bo uh, a boost. And that's what happened. You see? Verse 28. Then answered one of the people and said, thy father straightly charged the people with an oath saying, curse be the man that eateth any food this day. And the people were faint. Then said, Jonathan, my father have troubled the land. See, I pray you how my eyes have been enlightened because I tasted a little of this honey. How much more if haply the people had eaten freely today of the spoil of their enemies, which they found for had there not been. Now a much greater slaughter among the Philistines. So Jonathan was like, look, if we if we had energy, man, we would have whooped their ass even more. Right. If we had nutrients and things to, you know, if we would have ate instead of fasting, we would have we would have beat the bricks off their ass even more. Right. But that 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 shows you that what that, that he ate that honey and, and, and what and it gave him that energy. It gave him that nutrients he needed. Right. Which also this can be applied in the spirit as well, which is why the Lord likened his word unto honey. Let's get um the book of Proverbs. 24. And 13, and this is King Solomon, by the way. So if honey was unlawful, why is King Solomon saying this? This Proverbs 24 and 13, my son, eat thou honey because it is good. And the honeycomb, which is sweet to thy taste, so shall the knowledge of wisdom be unto thy soul. You see how he's comparing that honey unto the wisdom? So when Jonathan ate that wisdom, his eyes was enlightened, the same thing as us. When we ate of the words of Yahweh Basham Yahusha, our eyes were enlightened. You see? We were illuminated. When thou hast found it, when there shall be the Salaki, let me start again. Verse 14. So shall the knowledge of wisdom be unto thy soul, just like how that honey. When thou hast found it, then there shall be a reward and thy expectation shall not be cut off. You see? That's why in the 16th chapter, it's Proverbs 16 and 24. It says, pleasant words are as in honeycomb, sweet to the soul and health to the bones so just like a honeycomb is sweet to your soul and health to your bones so are pleasant words and what's more pleasant than this gospel than this good news that we have you see from there let's get psalms because romans 15 and 4 like like the elder read in his lesson these things are written for our learning man 
So here it is, our forefathers, man, is comparing the word unto honey. So they're comparing the, uh, uh, the Lord's word that's purified seven times, that's pure, the purest thing on this earth. It's comparing it to honey. So, so, so that makes the word unclean. Come on, man. This is the book of Psalms 119. And 103. It says, how sweet are thy words unto my taste. Yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth, man. It's the Psalms 19. In eight, I'm going to start at seven. It says the law of Yahweh Basham Yahusha is perfect, converting the soul, right? The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. That's enlightening us like, like the honey, right? The statues of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Ooh. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping of them there is great reward, man. And that's it, that's all. That's why verse 104 says, through thy precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. That's Psalms 119, 104. So from there, let's get a... The book of Ezekiel. This is Ezekiel 3. Let's start at the top. It says, Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, eat that thou findest, eat this roll, and go speak unto the house of Israel. Meaning what? Eat this book. So I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat that roll. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat and fill thy bowels with this roll. Talking your, your mind. Your belly is symbolic of your heart. Your mind. You see? Your bowels, symbolic, uh, just like how you literally eat food. And it goes down into your belly. It works through the bowels, right? What's well, the same thing as in your mind, your spirit. Your mind is, is symbolic of a belly and it digests, right? Fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat it and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. So you're comparing this word to honey, right? Same thing John read. This is the book of, uh, not read, but same thing John said. But this is uh, the book of Revelation, chapter 10 and verse 9. And I went unto the angel and said unto him, give me the little book. And he said unto me, take it and eat it up and it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up and it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter, meaning when he digested it. You see, because written within is lamentation, mourning and woe. Understanding that we fucked up, understanding that that, 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 that that this world is outwardly corrupt, right? It says, surely oppression maketh the wise man mad. The bitterness of waiting, knowing we, knowing we in this body of death and we got to wait upon our Lord, right? But the scripture says this, though. This is the book of uh, Proverbs 27, because you got to learn, learn how to deal with the bitterness of this truth. This is Proverbs 27 and 7 it says the full soul loatheth in honeycomb right if you that's why the lord said what to him that is full um let me get that it says woe to them that are full it says luke 6 and 25 it says woe unto you that are full for ye shall hunger Woe unto you that laugh now, for ye shall mourn and weep. And that's going into what? The people think that they got it already. Here it is. We out in the highways and hedges telling you what's wrong with the world, telling you that you should return back to the Lord, that you should repent. Oh, man, I ain't trying to hear what they talking about. Well, that's the mindset of somebody that's full, that's loathed in the honeycomb, meaning loathed in this word, right? It says, but to the hungry soul, every bitter thing is sweet, man. And that's Micah. It says, I will bear the indignation of the Lord until he rise up and, and plead my cause, man. So we understand that we have to go through these things, man. Through much tribulation shall we enter into the kingdom. We, we got to wait until our Lord returns. And that's understanding, you see? And even within that, that's sweet. Hebrews, the 12th chapter, says, no chastening of the present seem to be joyous, but grievous, but it yieldeth the peaceable fruits of righteousness, man. So we know that they, this suffering, this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that's going to be revealed. You see? So every hungry soul, 
hey, 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 that, 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 that bitterness is sweet, man. Why? Because it's perfecting us through the spirit. You know, that's why it says we glory in tribulation. Because tribulation worketh patience, patience worketh experience, experience worketh hope, and hope maketh not ashamed. Romans the fifth chapter. But from there, uh, let's get the book of Proverbs. 25 and 16. It's the reason that King Solomon says this. He says, has thou found honey? Eat so much as sufficient for thee, lest thou be filled therewith and vomit it. Now, this is literal. You eat too much honey, it, 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 it'll make your belly bitter and you'll throw up, right? Well, it's the same thing within this word. See, a lot of guys are eating a lot of honey, meaning they're eating too much of this word. And now they're vomiting it up. Talking about uh, uh, honey is unclean. You know, talking about uh, a chicken is unclean. Different examples of guys are oh, the 12 tribe chart uh, um, 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 is going off. You know, the chariots is not the chariots anymore. The missiles are not the missiles anymore. These are guys who ate too much honey and now they're vomiting it up. And these are guys that are what? Let's jump down to verse 27. It says, it is not good to eat much honey. So for men to search their own glory is not glory. And that's what these guys are doing. You know, they're eating a whole uh, 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 bunch of honey and they're vomiting it up, man. Why? Because they're searching out their own, their own glory instead of waiting upon Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, you know? So that's it. That's all I had through the spirit, man. I, I hope it was uh, plain. You know, hope I uh, made it clear. The Wadi Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai for giving me the spirit to do this lesson. I pray and hope it was edifying. I give all praises and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham Yahweh Shai, Baracha HaKadosh. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, salutations to all you brothers preaching the gospel in truth and the sincerity always in charity. Shalom.